Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about power pointing Mota startup. Let us see what we are going to discuss in this topic. What is power pointing Mota startup? Line diagram of power pointing startups. A dual voltage motor used for power pointing starting. Three steps starting for a power pointing motor. Automatic shutdown and overload protection merits and demerits of power pointing motor starters. Let us start with what is power pointing motor starters. So, like any other squirrel gauge induction motor, the construction of this power pointing motors also very much similar, except that it has two coils in each face which will be connected in parallel when the motor is running in a normal condition, and during the starting period, only one coil will be connected to the supply, which will have a high resistance. So that it can limit the starting current and it can limit the starting time. Once the motor achieves a particular amount of speed, then then automatically the second coil will be connected in parallel with the first coil, so that the resistance of the coil will be reduced. So we know that when the resistance are connected in parallel, then automatically the, the total net resistance will be reduced to off. So when it is reduced to off, then automatically the current will be increased, then the torque also can be increased. So this is the basic idea of power winding motor starters. These motor windings are intended to operate in parallel, that's what I said now. And only one half of the winding will be connected in the starting period, so that's why we call it as a power winding. And power winding motors are used to drive centrifugal loads such as fans, blowers and centrifugal Power winding starting reduces the normal locked rotor current to approximately 56% of the value if both windings are connected during starting. Okay, so what it means, the locked rotor current, this is nothing but the current which is taken by the squirrel gauge induction motor during the starting period. Okay, so when the rotor is in the stationary condition, from that state, when the rotor start rotate during that time, whatever the current is taken, that is called as locked rotor current. So, which I have already explained in our previous video as well. And the torque is reduced approximately to 50 percentage. It should be noted that neither of the two winding is individually capable of withstanding the starting current for more than few seconds. So, it is very crucial that we have to connect the second winding within a certain time period. So, usually it will be of 2 seconds. Okay. So, if you would not connect the second winding within this 2 seconds, what will happen? It will, in, uh, you know, the current which is passing to the first coil will uh, increase the temperature and the overheating will damage the coil, the first coil. So, we must not uh, leave the coil, one coil alone to run the motor for a long time. So for this purpose only we are going to have automatic you know um, shutdown of the system in case if the second winding is not triggered off. So let us see the line diagram of power winding starter. Here you can see there is a start and stop push buttons as like the other motor controls. You can see there is a stop push button and there is a start push button and we have two contactors and one timer here which is uh, um, you know, given time delay with the 2 seconds on delay timing and once you press this start push button it is going to close this circuit and it is going to energize this main contactor 1 so that means that the auxiliary contacts here will be getting closed and the main contacts here will be getting closed like this so when these main contacts are getting closed then the power will be transferred from the supply to the motor and this coil which can see here these three coils which is connected in start connection will be uh, taking this full power and the resistance of these coils will be high enough to um, limit the starting current and the starting torque. So once uh, a certain amount of uh, speed is achieved, so within 2 seconds or 3 seconds, so once this is achieved then the timer which we have given here time delay 2 seconds will be energized so that it will close this part here. So that means the second uh, contact at the 2M will be also energized. When it is getting energized, the 2M, so 
So this contacts will be getting closed. When this is getting closed, the current also passes through this coil to the coil. So now these two coils are getting connected in parallel so that the resistance will get reduced so that the current will be increased and the torque also can be increased. So here we are having two step acceleration. So one at high resistance, the second one with a low resistance. And you can also observe that both the coils have their uh, separate overheating uh, thermal mechanisms here, OL1 and OL2, and the, the contacts of them are connected in series, so that any one of the coil, if it is getting overheated, then immediately it can uh, open the circuit, the control circuit, so that the motor can be isolated from the power supply in case of any uh, failure uh, due to the thermal overheating. So that is what is shown here, overload protection, each winding is individually protected by thermal overload heaters. The heaters for each overload relay should be sized at one half of the motor nameplate current. So this is very important, the nameplate current, uh, maybe if it is 5 ampere, so we are going to have two coils which is going to be sharing the current. So the overload protection can be half of the individual uh, coil size. The contacts of both overload relays are connected in series so that an, any overload happens in any of them will be uh, disconnecting the motor from the supplies. It should be also noted that since each starter carry only half of the full load current of the motor, the starter size can generally be reduced from what would be required for a single starter. Another advantage of part winding starter is that uh, they provide a closed transition starting since the motor is never disconnected from the power line during the starting time. So this is very, um, you know, <coughs> uh, true with the same uh, uh, resistance starting as well. So where we are not disconnecting the power supply from the motor, we are just uh, including the uh, resistance or decreasing the resistance in the resistance, primary resistance starting. Here what we are going to do, we are going to uh, connect uh, two coils in uh, parallel so that uh, the uh, can be decreased so that the current and arc can be increased. So a dual voltage motor used for path winding starting, you can see here there is a two set of uh, coils which both of them are connected in star connection and both of them connected with three phase supply here and dual voltage motors are usually uh, designed to operate with the two different voltages, one uh, low voltage and the other one is a high voltage. When these two coils are connected in series, then it will work as a high voltage motor. And when these two coils are connected in parallel, it will work as a low voltage motor. So here, but that is not the case. Here, what is going to happen? What we are going to use only one coil during the starting period. After a certain time, we are going to include the second coil so that, uh, you know, the it is also, it is almost going to work as a low voltage motor during the uh, normal run and the high voltage motor, uh, actually the high voltage motor concept never comes here because uh, we, we, we are not going to connect these two coils in series, only we are going to connect one coil in the starting and after a certain time we are going to connect both of them in parallel. So this is what uh, the dual voltage motor is for, or winding starting. Remaining things are the uh, same, we are going to have stop start uh, switches and two contactors and the timer here for a time delay and we have two contactor contacts and overload relays and the respective contacts here. And uh, three steps starting for a uh, path winding motor. Actually the starting time period uh, from the transition from the, you know, the starting coil connection and then the running coil connection, uh, actually it is very much limited because of uh, the withstanding, the thermal heat uh, withstanding capacity of the coil. So this can be uh, overcome by connecting the external resistors so that uh, it can withstand for a, a little more time so that, uh, you know, the starting time period can be increased and uh, the, you know, the steps can be also increased. The, the gradual uh, 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 increase in the voltage or the power can be increased. Okay, so that for that purpose, we are going to connect the external uh, resistor here, we can see here there is a power supply and uh, the motor is connected uh, same like the before case and we have two overload relays and uh, uh, two contactors and uh, two timers here. Actually one timer for uh, disconnecting the resistor, the another one for uh, uh, connecting the uh, second coil. 
So now let us see the step by step uh, process here. Here we have a, a stop switch and we have a start switch here. The start switch will be closed here like this. And once it is closed here, then the main contact will be energized. Once it is energized, then we are going to close these contacts here. And this particular stage, we are going to have the resistor and uh, the coil resistance. So here now the uh, the resistance will be very high, so then the torque and uh, initial current will be very much uh, reduced. And after this stage, after two seconds of time period, then we are going to have, you know, we are going to disconnect this um, resistor. Once it is disconnected, then only we are going to have the uh, one coil resistance. And then after two seconds, we are going to sort this uh, you know, contactor. Once this contactor is uh, energized, then that means uh, we are going to have the reduced resistance. So when first time we are going to have the external resistance and the coil resistance connected in series. And the second time we are going to remove this external resistance, only coil resistance. And after that, two coils connected in parallel, so the resistance will be very low. And by this time, the starting torque and the, the torque which we are uh, obtaining from the motor as well as the current which we are taking to uh, meet the load condition will be high. So this is what so this is what we have discussed. The thermal capacity of the stator winding tightly limits the length of starting time for a power winding motor. So for increasing that, only we are introducing a uh, external resistor so that the external resistor will be removed in the first two seconds after that the uh, winding alone will be connected and later the second winding also will be connected in parallel so that the time can be increased and the steps can be increased so that uh, smoother the operation will be achieved. So the resistors are generally sized to provide uh, about 50% of the line voltage to the stator winding when the motor is first started. This provides approximately three equal increment of a starting for the motor. Automatic shutdown actually as I told you earlier, so if you if you do not connect the second coil immediately after two seconds or three seconds, the first coil will be heated up because of the high voltage and it will lead to the damage of the insulation as well as the coil. So we need to have a mechanism to identify the you know the high temperature in the first coil and in case if the second coil is not connected properly or not connected accidentally so then immediately the first coil need to be disconnected the motor need to be disconnected from the uh, system for achieving this we are going to have a watchdog a timer so here in this circuit we can see here again we are uh, having uh, stop push button and uh, start push button to start the system and there is uh, uh, timer NC contact here which is normally closed and when we are pressing this uh, start push button the control relay 1 will be energized once this control relay 1 is energized then we are here control relay here will be uh, closed and this leads the main contactor to get closed and when the main contactor is getting closed then here these three contacts will be closed and the first uh, set of coil will be energized and the overload relay here will be monitoring the current and the temperature relay will be monitored and the contact here is uh, operating in case of any overload then it will open the circuit and uh, you can also see that once 1 m is energized then this contact will be closed and the timer is ticking now and once tier 1 is uh, reached the preset value then this timer will be getting closed and once it is closed then that means the 2 m will be uh, the 2M will be uh, energized and once it is energized like this then the second contact will be uh, closed. In case if uh, the second M is not, if this is uh, connected in 2 seconds that means it will open the circuit here. So if, if this is open then the watchdog timer will be deactivated. In case if it is not energized, the second contact is not energized in 2 seconds or uh, within this 4 second uh, time that means what is going to happen this contact is not going to open so if this is not open then that means the watchdog timer will reach the preset time of 4 seconds and this will open the contact here once this is open then the total circuit will turn off so this is a automatic shutdown in case of the second coil is not connected in parallel to the first coil to give a protection in case of uh, failure uh, so this is what uh, actually they have explained video, the same thing.
The merits and demerits is less expensive. Most of the starting meter require additional voltage and DC minimum, such as transformer, resistor, or reactors. But uh, here we are going to use the same coil inside the motor itself as a uh, voltage DC minimum. It uses only off size contactors since we have two coils and uh, we are rating the contactors for off size. And it provides closed transition starting, as I told you here. We are not going to stop the power supply. We are going to just uh, add the resistor in parallel so that uh, it is not going to disconnect from the supply at during the starting time. The fixed starting torque is uh, poor. This is a disadvantage. The fixed the starter is almost uh, always have an incremental start device. It is unsuitable for long starting, high inertia loads. So these are the drawbacks. Hope it is clear uh, with this content. And uh, thank you for watching.